best way I can describe it. Just like a throbbing sound. Mm. Hey everybody, this is Game Freak 104. Welcome back to more or less play. My name is Jaden Funk, and I want um, to teach you slam episode, poetry. Doing but talk is cheap, right? You cheap like a toy made in China by kids in sweatshops. Working you, uh, 9 to 5 like Dolly Parton. Let the interruption. But wall. North Korea just dropped a nuclear bomb on us. Just like I dropped Redoing a bomb. Mom and Dad, I'm not running the family so. business. Mom and Dad, I want to be not a slam poet artist. To be happy like a megastore smiley face, you have to wear a matching vest just like everybody else. Mm. I'm Cookie Masterson, and these muffins are to die for! Listen, don't worry, I find that most people enjoy playing alone. <laughs> and are wrong- Actually, I just realized, well, the one is for the My Little Pony question, but I need to get a bit of score on it, so I'm gonna show up the full extent of that frickin' thing. The answer of the game is sponsored by... Mother Trucker, truck store for women. For a limited time, try our belly slimming seat belts and get a new floral mud flap for half price. Find the wrong answer associated with our sponsor to get yourself some sweet prizes and bonus cash. Okay, let's begin. Get ready, time to question. To get started, bridge over fire water. If Captain Morgan only played games related to rum, what card game might he play? Bridge, Canasta, Texas Hold'em, or 52 card pickup? You gotta know when to hold them and no one to admit you just made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Correct answer, show yourself. Canasta is a form of rum or rummy, so Captain Morgan would play Canasta. But never a gin rummy, it's a conflict of interest. It's time for Perfect Cut Neil Diamond, and it's a dis or dat. I'm gonna read off seven things, and for each one, tell me if it's the title of a Neil Diamond album, or a piece of evidence used in the O.J. Simpson murder trial. If it's an album by Neil Diamond, press the Y button. If it's connected to O.J. Simpson, press the A button. We good? Here we go. Crumpled sock. Velvet gloves and sp taproot manuscript. Bloody footprint. Stones. Leather glob. Hairs. Well, that glove didn't fit. <laughs> and while the evidence against him is damning, I still believe O.J. Simpson was hilarious in The Naked Gun. Dance with me, Disco 3! Here we have... Stop Staring! It's the Put the choices into order, then buzz in and see if you are right! Tell you what, don't screw this up and there's a little extra cash in it for you. Put these buildings in order from the one with the fewest stairs to the one with the most. Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building, Seattle Space Needle. Empire State Building, Space Needle, Eiffel Tower, Space Needle, Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building, Eiffel Tower, Space Needle... Sweet dreams. It's so obvious. The Space Needle has 848 steps, the Eiffel Tower has 1,665, and the Empire State Building has a whopping 1,860 steps. And I won't be visiting any of them because I'm a firm believer if you climb steps, there better be a water slide at the top. Next. Midnight in the Olive Garden of Good and Evil. Have you ever noticed that the sign for Olive Garden doesn't have any olives on it? It does have a different food, though. Considering what food does appear on the Olive Garden sign, the sign maker probably heard the boss yell, You idiot! It's Olive Garden, not Cheese Garden, Grape Garden, Pasta Garden, or Breadstick Garden! Dope! Here's what a right answer looks like. 
Olive Garden signs have a bunch of grapes on them. They use grapes to give customers the feeling of eating al fresco in an Italian garden. An Italian garden in a mall parking lot. Take a stab at a leg up. I don't want to brag, but I have some pretty shapely calf muscles. Yep, I like to wear shorts around the office to show off my tanned golden calves. Put some pants on! He's just jealous. Say, who else wouldn't like my golden calves? Noah, Adam, Cain, or Moses? How's that forbidden fruit taste? Kind of bitter, isn't it? <laughs> it was begging to be picked. When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he found his people worshipping a golden calf. The animal, not a leg, which he quickly destroyed. But even with the power of God, he wouldn't be able to destroy my golden calves. They're solid as a rock. Ow! 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 Over tanned! That's round one, and I'm happy to report you have the best score. Keep in mind, all the prizes are doubled in round two. Now get out there and make me proud. May I introduce... That just krills me. You know what I hate? When cartoons are factually inaccurate. Take SpongeBob SquarePants, for example. Sponges do not live in pineapples, they are not friends with starfish, and what pants they do wear are most certainly not square. Oh, and another thing. The evil genius Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants would be more accurately named what? Plinko, Plankter, Plank, or Gary? I think you're missing your brain organism. Here's what you meant to pick. Plankton is a collection of floating organisms, while one of those organisms is referred to as a Plankter. Oh, but let's not give our children the truth. No, let's feed them lies so they'll all grow up to trust us. Unbelievable. Question seven. Say hello to Great Michael Scotts. Which Steve Carell movie would an eschatologist probably be the most interested in? 40-year-old virgin, anchorman, seeking a friend for the end of the world, or get smart? Let me guess, this feels like a bag of sand. <laughs> Next time, try this. An eschatologist is a theologist interested in the events leading up to the apocalypse or the end of the world. Which reminds me, guys, that goat carcass in the office fridge was for a blood ritual I need to do to stop the end of days from happening this weekend. And it was clearly labeled, so whoever ate it, not cool. <laughs> Yeah, Let's try. I love trashy ladies. <laughs> Breathe it in. Yes. Breathe it in. Looking through your trash bag. What's it say about you? trash. Okay, so we've got a bunch of actual garbage in here. I'm gonna go through it and see what we got. Let's see. There's a bunch of arrows. Yikes! A cold bone. And what I can only imagine is a threatening note card that reads, I beat Meryl. Whose terrifying trash is this? Selena Gomez's, Jennifer Lawrence's, Emma Watson's, or Kat Dennings's? <sighs> One right answer coming up. Jennifer Lawrence plays the skilled archer Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger Games movies, was nominated for an Oscar for Winter's Bone, and when she did win an Oscar for Silver Linings Playbook, famously said, I beat Meryl. So, I guess this trash isn't as scary as I first thought. It all makes sense. The bone was probably for research and, uh... Oh, wait. No. No, there's a lot of human skulls in here. A lot of human skulls. Try this on for size. Anniversary dinner. 
If the first man to suggest that Earth revolved around the sun, Galileo, had illustrated his idea using food from his own country, what would he have used? Spaghetti for the orbits, meatball for the sun, shoestring fries for the orbits, brie cheese for the sun, sauerkraut... No lay! <laughs> Here's where the money is. Galileo was Italian. Little known fact, he opened the first Olive Garden in a small parking lot in Pisa. Here's one for you. Tuning you out. I am absolutely awful at remembering song lyrics. Give me a hand. Buy me some peanuts and... Um... The treat that has Sugar Bear for a mascot. The treat that has the Dutch boy for a mascot. The treat that has Jeffrey Giraffe for a mascot. <clears throat> or... Wait, you want me to buy you an entire Toys R Us franchise? Greedy. That's just greedy. <laughs> oh, you're gonna kick yourself. Cracker Jack, that's it. Cracker Jack <laughs> has Sailor Toys Jack for a mascot. Franchise. Also known in some countries as Disappointing Temporary Tattoo Prize Jack. Okay, we're set. <laughs> Uh, could we get one of the writers in here for some more pre-show announcements? I feel like I've said some of these a couple times already. So I realize I've forgotten my bag, and I go back into the office. Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, and my armpits are always in tune. <laughs> I'm glad it's just you and me. I'm feeling a little needy. And your wrong answer of the game is being sponsored by... Chemicals Chemicals. If it's not flammable, it's not from Chemicals. Try to choose the wrong answer brought to you by our sponsor to get prizes and cash. <laughs> Alright, let's move. Get ready, time for question. Okay, to get things started, Duck Duck Dynasty. Sorry, I'm, uh, I'm playing with some of these duck calls I ordered online. Unfortunately, they didn't have the one I was really looking for. Which of these is a duck booty call? Hey girl, get your barnacle over here. Hey girl. No, but Furcula is fun to say. Furcula, Furcula. <laughs> Let me show you something. I screwed up, I was meaning to get it right. <laughs> Uh, attention, there are flowers. Flowers have been uh, delivered from, uh, from a prisoner. Uh... Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, and my armpits are always in tune. <laughs> Playing alone, I see. What else is new? And today's wrong answer of the game is being brought to you by... Chemicals Chemicals. If it's not flammable, it's not from Chemicals. Sniff out our sponsor's wrong answer of the game and you'll end up with a great prize and serious cash. <laughs> so, let's make this happen. Get ready, time for question. Let's start with Duck Duck Dynasty. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm playing with some of these duck calls I ordered online. Unfortunately, they didn't have the one I was really looking for. Which of these is a duck booty call? Hey girl, get your bar. The cloaca is the duck butt, or you know, the hole that it does all its business out of. <laughs> Oh wait, here's a cloaca call, but I'm not going to put my mouth on it. That's gross. Why not try fear and puppeteering in Las Vegas? Which Muppet shares a name with the kind of writing Hunter S. Thompson is known for? Rolf, Kermit, Beaker, or... I so wanted you to pick this one. Hunter S. Thompson created the genre of gonzo journalism. 
Now, on the other hand, Fozzie journalism is centered around the seven W's. Who, what, when, where, why, waka, and waka. You just got Bunsen burned. So let your problems melt away with... A barrel of sulfuric acid from Chemical's Chemicals. We're the problem dissolvers. Today's wrong answer of the game earns you 4,000 bucks. Enjoy. Coming up next, a dick question, and it's a dick or dat. I'm going to read off seven titles, and for each one, tell me if it's one of TV Guide's 50 worst TV shows of all time, or a chapter in former U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney's autobiography, In My Time. If it's one of the 50 worst TV shows, press the Y button. If it's a chapter from Dick Cheney's autobiography, Press the A button. Okay, we're off. Me and the chimp. She's the sheriff. Mr. Secretary. Belltown. One of the boys. Alexander the Great. Whoops. Have you considered a career in politics? <laughs> I really enjoyed the eight seasons Dick Cheney starred in Undercover Boss. I call this one the land of milk and honey smacks. Before eating which cereal would it be most appropriate for you to exclaim L'chaim? Lucky Charms, Cheerios, Honeycomb, L'chaim is a popular Hebrew toast meaning to life. I used to make a toast before eating cereal every morning. Sometimes two pieces of toast. My Take a good look at My Little Pony Friendship is Madness. Which character would qualify as My Little Gelding? A newborn Twilight Sparkle, a pregnant Pinkie Pie, an albino Apple Bloom, or a castrated Featherweight? <laughs> Time's a wasting! Don't worry, friends. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. <laughs> Why didn't you pick this? Oh, that was good. <laughs> a gelding is a castrated horse or donkey. The vets have developed a very specialized method for castrating horses. It's called marriage. Am I right? Yeah! <laughs> That's all we got for round one. And you've got a decent score there. Don't screw it up. Don't forget, all the questions in round two are worth double. Okay, let's see what's next. And on its way, take me to your cheerleader. Ready? Okay. Be aggressive. Be aggressive. There are some cheerleaders in the studio today. They're harmless, but whenever this happens, we know it's time to spray again. Scram! Get out of here! Wait, Cookie, let us do a cheer first. We've got a big game coming up. <sighs> Fine. Ready? Okay. Ra, ra, sis, boom, ba. That's it? Okay. What team might they be cheering for? The fighting sun gods? The... You answered so stupidly. You're dumb. Yeah, yeah, you're dumb. <laughs> <laughs> Want to see the answer? I remembered incorrectly, apparently. Answer. The Egyptian sun god is named Ra. <laughs> yay! 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 You know, you kids seem okay. You can stay if you want, but first you have to give me a C. Uh, we have to go. Wait! Don't go! You still have to give me an O-O-K-I-E and then tell me what it spells! Question 7! That dumb cheer. Open wide for... I give this movie a WB-. 
Which movie studio logo does not include a mammal? MGM's Dream. The MGM logo has the roaring lion, the TriStar logo has a Pegasus, and the DreamWorks logo has a little boy sitting on the moon. But the Paramount logo is just a giant mountain. And the thing I never understand is, why is the DreamWorks boy sitting on the moon fishing instead of suffocating in the cold vacuum of space? <laughs> uh, well, either way, looks like he's having fun. Follow me down to the sea. Next up, ChewTube. Oh look, I've found yet another fortune cookie. They never seem to run out of these things. Cookie, fortune, cookie, fortune, fortune. Friendship is a two-way street. Okay then, which of these famous streets is the least friendly? Abbey Road, Pennsylvania, Abbey Road, Pennsylvania Avenue, and Champs Elysees are all two-way streets. But the famously crooked Lombard Street in San Francisco is one way, and therefore the least friendly. It's true, I've been to Lombard Street on about seven different occasions, and every time it acts as if we've never met each other before. Jerk. There's floor floating by the water instead of the shark. Here's again. one I like to call Pop is Dead. Which Kelly Clarkson song would philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche probably sing at karaoke because he said pretty much the same thing? Since you've been gone, Mr. No- Nietzsche coined the phrase, what does not kill me makes me stronger, which is paraphrased often throughout Kelly Clarkson's hit. Nietzsche's famous phrase, to live is to suffer, went on to inspire the Clarkson film, From Justin to Kelly. <laughs> Bucker up for Undercover Fashion Police. Which of these clothing item names is redundant? Assless chaps, sleep chaps inherently have the butt cut out of them, so it's redundant to say assless chaps. Now, just to clarify, if you've had your ass surgically removed and you're wearing chaps, yes, those would actually be assless chaps. Brace yourself for the attack. Ah, you already know the rules. Off you go. Let's get wild. What wild film did you appear in? Good luck. First time I've seen Cat for this one. Girls are insane.
all she wrote! You know, sometimes I like to be really wild and spontaneous. Like, take this coffee mug. Who needs it? Ah! Oh, I love that mug! It had dog bird on it! I'm gonna have to super glue it back together. I, I just have to. You don't know Jack! Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, and my armpits are always in tune. I have to know if either of the other answers for the My Little Pony question are funny, as well as if either of the other answers for the SpongeBob question are funny. Flying solo? So did well, not answers, but the responses to the wrong answers. I have to know if the responses to either of the two remaining wrong answers I have for the my Little Pony and Sponge Spongebob questions are funny or not. Julia Earhart, and look how that turned out. <laughs> and our wrong answer of the game is brought to you by... Chemicals Chemicals. If it's not flammable, it's not from Chemicals. If you happen to find our sponsor's wrong answer of the game, you'll be rewarded with big prizes and cash. <laughs> Alright, let's get this party started. Hmm. Right off the top, Duck Duck Dynasty. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm playing with some of these duck calls I ordered online. Unfortunately, they didn't have the one I was really looking for. Which of these is a duck booty call? Hey girl, get your barnacle over here. Hey girl, get your cloaca over. Whoa. Allow me. The cloaca is the duck butt. Or, you know, the hole that it does all its business out of. Oh, wait. Here's a cloaca call. But I'm not going to put my mouth on it. That's gross. Here's a good one. Fear and puppeteering in Las Vegas. Which Muppet shares a name with the kind of writing Hunter S. Thompson is known for? Rolf, Kermit, Beaker, or Gonzo? It's not easy being wrong. <laughs> oh, that's so good. No, no, I'll get this. Hunter S. Thompson created the genre wrong. of Gonzo journalism. On the other hand, Fozzie journalism is centered around the seven W's. Who, what, when, where, why, waka, and waka. Dance with me, Disco 3. This one's called a dick question. And it's a dick or dat. I'm going to read off seven titles, and for each one, tell me if it's... One of TV Guide's 50 Worst TV Shows of All Time, or a chapter in former U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney's autobiography, In My Time. If it's one of the 50 Worst TV Shows, press the Y button. If it's a chapter from Dick Cheney's autobiography, press the A button. Cool, let's do it. Me and the Chimp. She's the Sheriff. Mr. Secretary. Belltown! One of the boys! Alexander the Great! Whoops! Have you considered a career in politics? I really enjoyed the eight seasons Dick Cheney starred in Undercover Boss. <laughs> and now, the land of milk and honey smacks. 
Before eating which cereal would it be most appropriate for you to exclaim L'chaim, Lucky Charms, Cheerios, Honeycomb, or Life? <laughs> this would have worked. L'chaim is a popular Hebrew toast meaning to life. I used to make a toast before eating cereal every morning. Sometimes two pieces of toast. How about My Little Pony Friendship is Madness? Which character would qualify as My Little Gelding? A newborn Twilight Sparkle? A pre I think you know it's coming. <laughs> Smart people choose this. A gelding is a castrated horse or donkey. Vets have developed a very specialized method for castrating horses. It's called marriage. Am I right? Yeah! <laughs> We've finished round one, and hopefully you'll do even better in the next round. Don't forget, in round two, all the cash is doubled. Let's keep going. This one's known as, Take Me to Your Cheerleader. Ready? Okay! Be aggressive! Be -E aggressive! There are some cheerleaders in the studio today. They're harmless, but whenever this happens, we know it's time to spray again. Scram! Get out of here! Wait, Cookie! Let us do a cheer first. We've got a big game coming up. <sighs> Fine. Ready? Okay! Ra, ra, sis, boom, ba! That's it? Okay. What team might they be cheering for? The fighting sun gods? The fighting war gods? The fighting fertility gods? How could love be wrong? But it is. Oh, honestly. The Egyptian sun god is named Ra. You know, you kids seem okay. You can stay if you want, but first you have to give me a C! Uh, we have to go. Wait! Don't go! You still have to give me an O-O-K-I-E and then tell me what it spells! Question 7! Take a stab at... I give this movie a WB-. Which movie studio logo does not include a mammal? MGM's, DreamWorks, TriStars, or Paramount? Swing and a miss! <laughs> Watch how easy this is. The MGM logo has the Roaring Lion, the TriStar logo has a Pegasus, and the DreamWorks logo has a little boy sitting on the moon. But the Paramount logo is just a giant mountain. And the thing I never understand is, why is the DreamWorks boy sitting on the moon fishing instead of suffocating in the cold vacuum of space? Uh, well, either way, looks like he's having fun. Follow me down to the sea. Coming up next, ChewTube. Oh look, I've found yet another fortune cookie. I never seem to run out of these things. Cookie, fortune, cookie, fortune, fortune. Friendship is a two-way street. Okay then, which of these famous streets is the least friendly? Abbey Road, Pennsylvania Avenue, Lombard Street, or Champs-Élysées? Fail to the chief. Where's that confounded right answer? Abbey Road, Pennsylvania Avenue, and Champs-Élysées are all two-way streets, but the famously crooked Lombard Street in San Francisco is one way, and therefore the least friendly. It's true, I've been to Lombard Street on about seven different occasions, and every time it acts as if we've never met each other before. Jerk. Here's a good one. Pop is dead. Which Kelly Clarkson song would philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche probably sing at karaoke because he said pretty much the same thing? Since you've been gone, Mr. Know-It-All, get up a cowboy's anthem or stronger what doesn't kill you. Do I have to point out the irony here? <laughs> Ready for this? Nietzsche coined the phrase, what does not kill me makes me stronger, which is paraphrased often throughout Kelly Clarkson's hit. Nietzsche's famous phrase, to live is to suffer, went on to inspire the Clarkson film, From Justin to Kelly. <laughs> 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 
May I introduce Undercover Fashion Police? Which of these clothing item names is redundant? Assless chaps, sleeveless cardigans, pocketless capris, or hoodless hoodies? Stupid? Yes. Redundant? No. <laughs> now pay attention. Chaps inherently have the butt cut out of them, so Stupid it's redundant yes, to it say assless no. chaps. Now, just to clarify, if you've had your ass surgically removed and you're wearing chaps, yes, those would actually be assless chaps. We are good to go. Uh, attention, there are leftover french fries in the... Hi, I'm Cookie Masterson, and my armpits are always in tune. <laughs> Oh good, you're all alone. Now he's just about to do some laundry. This will be much more fun. <laughs> and the wrong answer of the game is brought to you by... Chemicals Chemicals. If it's not flammable, it's not from Chemicals. Pick the wrong answer associated with our sponsor to win a fabulous prize and big cash. Okay, let's hit it. Get ready, time for fashion. One. To get things rolling, Duck Duck Dynasty. Sorry, I'm uh, I'm playing with some of these duck calls I ordered online. Unfortunately, they didn't have the one I was really looking for. Which of these is a duck booty call? Hey girl, get your barnacle over here. Hey girl, get your cloaca over here. Hey girl, get your furcula over here. Or, hey girl, get your anus over here. Time is short. <laughs> no. Were you thinking of this one? The cloaca is the duck butt, or, you know, the hole that it does all its business out of. Oh, wait! Here's a cloaca call, but I'm not going to put my mouth on it. That's gross. Take a good look at Fear and Puppeteering in Las Vegas. Which Muppet shares a name with the kind of writing Hunter S. Thompson is known for? Rolf, Kermit, Beaker, or Gonzo? <laughs> Rawful. <laughs> this would've worked. Hunter S. Thompson created the genre of Gonzo journalism. On the other hand, Fozzie journalism is centered around the seven W's. Who, what, when, where, why, waka, and waka. This one's called a dick question, and it's a dick or dat. I'm gonna read off seven titles, and for each one, tell me if it's one of TV Guide's 50 worst TV shows of all time, or a chapter in former U.S. Vice President Dick Cheney's autobiography, In My Time. If it's one of the 50 worst TV shows, press the Y button. If it's a chapter from Dick Cheney's autobiography, Press the A button. All right, let's get started. Me and the chimp. She's the sheriff. Mr. Secretary. Helltown. One of the boys. Alexander the Great. Whoops. Whoops. <laughs> I really enjoyed the eight seasons Dick Cheney starred in Undercover Boss. <laughs> Next, the land of milk and honey smacks. Before eating which cereal, would it be most appropriate for you to exclaim, L'chaim! Lucky Charms, Cheerios, Honeycomb, or Life? 
cheerio like Lahayam is a salutation. But if you know what Lahayam means, you know there's a much better answer here. Wrong. <laughs> One right answer coming up. Lahayam is a popular Hebrew toast meaning to life. I used to make a toast before eating cereal every morning. Sometimes two pieces of toast. Fuck her up for My Little Pony Friendship is Madness. Which character would qualify as My Little Gelding? A newborn Twilight Sparkle, a pregnant Pinkie Pie, an albino Apple Bloom, or a castrated Featherweight? That was quality. I so wanted you to pick this one. A gelding is a castrated horse or donkey. Vets have developed a very specialized method for castrating horses. It's called marriage. Am I right? Yeah! That about does it for round one. And lucky for you, there's room for improvement. Keep in mind, in round two, everything is worth twice as much. It's time. Here we have... Take me to your cheerleader. Ready? Okay. Be aggressive. Be -E aggressive. There are some cheerleaders in the studio today. They're harmless, but whenever this happens, we know it's time to spray again. Scram! Get out of here! Wait, Cookie, let us do a cheer first. We've got a big game coming up. <sighs> Fine. Ready? Okay. Rah, rah, sis, boom, ba. That's it? Okay. What team might they be cheering for? The fighting sun gods? The fighting war- <laughs> Here's where the money is. The Egyptian sun god is named Ra. You kids seem okay. You can stay if you want, but first you have to give me a C! Uh, we have to go. Wait! Don't go! You still have to give me an O-O-K-I-E and then tell me what it spells! Question 7! Say hello to... I give this movie a WB-. Which movie studio logo does not include a mammal? MGM's, DreamWorks, TriStars, or Paramount? <laughs> Ready for this? The MGM logo has the roaring lion, the TriStar logo has a pegasus, and the DreamWorks logo has a little boy sitting on the moon. But the Paramount logo is just a giant mountain. And the thing I never understand is, why is the DreamWorks boy sitting on the moon fishing instead of suffocating in the cold vacuum of space? Uh, well, either way, looks like he's having fun. Follow me down to the sea. Oh, and on its way, Chew Tube. Oh look, I've found yet another fortune cookie. I never seem to run out of these things. Cookie, fortune, cookie, fortune, cookie. Friendship is a two-way street. Okay then, which of these famous streets is the least friendly? Abbey Road, Pennsylvania Avenue? This one didn't really come together for you, did it? It was begging to be picked. Abbey Road, Pennsylvania Avenue, and Champs-Élysées are all two-way streets, but the famously crooked Lombard Street in San Francisco is one way, and therefore the least friendly. It's true, I've been to Lombard Street on about seven different occasions, and every time it acts as if we've never met each other before. Jerk. There were four again. Next up, Pop is dead. Which Kelly Clarkson song would philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche probably sing at karaoke because he said pretty much the same thing? Since you've been gone, Mr. Know-It-All, get up a cowboy's anthem or stronger what doesn't kill you. Ow. It's so obvious. Nietzsche coined the phrase, what does not kill me makes me stronger, which is paraphrased often throughout Kelly Clarkson's hit. 
H's famous phrase, to live is to suffer, went on to inspire the Clarkson film from Justin to Kelly. And now, undercover fashion police. Which of these clothing item names is redundant? Assless chaps, sleeveless cardigans, pocketless capris, or hoodless hoodies? Sucks to be you. No, no, I'll get this. Chaps inherently... Okay, we're set. Okay, everybody, if you're not sure what to do right now, maybe just fiddle with some knobs, try to look busy. I'm Cookie Masterson, and these muffins are to die for! Just you? Great! Looks like I'll have to do all the heavy lifting. And today's wrong answer of the game is brought to you by... Mother Trucker! Truck store for women! For a limited time, try our belly slimming seat belts and get a new floral mud flap for half price. Try to choose the wrong answer brought to you by our sponsor to get prizes and cash. <laughs> Alright, here we go. Get ready, time for fashion. One. Let's begin with Bridge Over Fire Water. If Captain Morgan only played games related to rum, what card game might he play? Bridge, Canasta, Texas Hold'em, or 52 Card Pickup? Check, please. Watch how easy this is. Canasta is a form of rum or rummy, so Captain Morgan would play Canasta. But never a gin rummy. It's a conflict of interest. Open wide for Perfect Cut Neil Diamond, and it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one, tell me if it's the title of a Neil Diamond album, or a piece of evidence used in the O.J. Simpson murder trial. If it's an album by Neil Diamond, press the Y button. If it's connected to O.J. Simpson, press the A button. Okay, let's move. Crumpled sock. All the gloves and spit. Taproot manuscript. Bloody footprint. Stones. Leather glove. Hairs. Well, that glove didn't fit. And while the evidence against him is damning, I still believe O.J. Simpson was hilarious in The Naked Gun. Dance with me, disco three. How about... Stop staring. It's the put the choices into order, then buzz in and see if you are right. Tell you what, don't screw this up and there's a little extra cash in it for you. Put these buildings in order from the one with the fewest stairs to the one with the most. Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building, Seattle Space Needle. Empire State Building, Space Needle, Eiffel Tower, Space Needle, Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building, Eiffel Tower, Space Needle, Empire State Building, or Space Needle, Empire State Building, Eiffel Tower. Why didn't you pick this? The Space Needle has 848 steps, the Eiffel Tower has 1,665, and the Empire State Building has a whopping 1,860 steps. 
And I won't be visiting any of them because I'm a firm believer if you climb steps, there better be a water slide at the top. I call this one Midnight in the Olive Garden of Good and Evil. Have you ever noticed that the sign for Olive Garden doesn't have any olives on it? It does have a different food, though. Considering what food does appear on the Olive Garden sign, the sign maker probably heard the boss yell, You idiot! It's Olive Garden, not Cheese Garden, Grape Garden, Pasta Garden, or Breadstick Garden! Say cheese. <laughs> Allow me. Olive Garden signs have a bunch of grapes on them. They use grapes to give customers the feeling of eating al fresco in an Italian garden. An Italian garden in a mall parking lot. Five fingers! Here's one for you. A leg up. I don't want to brag, but I have some pretty shapely calf muscles. Yep, I like to wear shorts around the office to show off my tanned golden calves. Put some pants on! He's just jealous. <clears throat> Say, who else wouldn't like my golden calves? Noah, Adam, Cain, or Moses? <laughs> you know, you're just setting me up when you pick an answer that sounds so much like no. <laughs> want to see the answer? When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he found his people worshipping a golden calf. The animal, not a leg. Which he quickly destroyed. But even with the power of God, you wouldn't be able to destroy my golden calves. They're solid as a rock. Ow! 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 Over tanned! That'll wrap up round one. And it looks like you might be getting the hang of this. Remember, I'm doubling the value of each question in round two. Let's get back to the action. Why not try? That just krills me. You know what I hate? When cartoons are factually inaccurate. Take SpongeBob SquarePants, for example. Sponges do not live in pineapples, they are not friends with starfish, and what pants they do wear are most certainly not square. Oh, and another thing. The evil genius Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants would be more accurately named what? Plinko, Plankter, Plank, or Gary? <laughs> Next time, try this. Plankton is a collection of floating organisms, while one of those organisms is referred to as a Plankter. Oh, but let's not give our children the truth. No, let's feed them lies so they'll all grow up to trust us. Unbelievable. Question seven. Let's try Great Michael Scott's. Which Steve Carell movie would an eschatologist probably be the most interested in? 40-year-old virgin, anchorman, seeking a friend for the end of the world, or get smart? <laughs> <laughs> Smart people choose this. An eschatologist is a theologist interested in the events leading up to the apocalypse or the end of the world. Which reminds me, guys, that goat carcass in the office fridge was for a blood ritual I need to do to stop the end of days from happening this weekend. And it was clearly labeled, so whoever ate it, not cool. Here's one I like to call, I love trashy ladies. <laughs> breathe it in. Yes, breathe it in. Look at the old trash bag. What's it say about you? Funky trash. Okay, so we've got a bunch of actual garbage in here. I'm going to go through it and see what we got. Let's see. There's a bunch of arrows. Yikes! A cold bone. And what I can only imagine is a threatening note card that reads, I beat Meryl. Whose terrifying trash is this? Selena Gomez's, Jennifer Lawrence's, Emma Watson's, or Kat Dennings's? Oh, the perks of being a numbskull. <laughs> Here's what you meant to pick. 
Jennifer Lawrence plays the skilled archer Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger Games movies, was nominated for an Oscar for Winter's Bone, and when she did win an Oscar for Silver Linings Playbook, famously said, I beat Meryl. So, I guess this trash isn't as scary as I first thought. It all makes sense. The bone was probably for research and, uh... Oh, wait. No. No, there's a lot of human skulls in here. A lot of human skulls. Next, Universary Dinner. If the first man to suggest that Earth revolved around the sun, Galileo, had illustrated his idea using food from his own country, what would he have used? Spaghetti for the orbits, meatball for the sun, shoestring fries for the orbits, brie cheese for the... Mmm! Mmm! Oh, delicious, but wrong. <laughs> no, honestly. Galileo was Italian. Little known fact, he opened the first Olive Garden in a small parking lot in Pisa. Say hello to... Tuning You Out. I am absolutely awful at remembering song lyrics. Give me a hand. Buy me some peanuts and, um... A treat that has Sugar Bear for a mascot. The treat that has the Dutch Boy for a mascot. The treat that has Jeffrey Giraffe for a mascot. <clears throat> or the treat that has Sailor Jack for a mascot. Watch your time! Not even a stab in the dark? Who knows, you might have picked this. Cracker Jack, that's it. Cracker Jack has Sailor Jack for a mascot. Also known in some countries as Disappointing Temporary Tattoo Prize Jack. Step right up to the Jack attack. When you see two clues that match, press your A button. 2,000 big ones if you're right, but if you're wrong, you lose 2,000. And don't forget... Remember the clue! It's gotta be a match that fits this clue. King of my nightmares. What Stephen King novel is this? Good luck. Hey guys! Mm. 
I'm Cookie Masterson, and these muffins are to die for. <laughs> it's just the two of us. Please don't kill me. And your wrong answer of the game is being sponsored by... Mother Trucker, truck store for women. For a limited time, try our belly slimming seat belts and get a new floral mud flap for half price. Find the wrong answer associated with our sponsor to get yourself some sweet prizes and bonus cash. <laughs> and right this way. Get ready, time for fashion. To begin with, bridge over fire water. If Captain Morgan only played games related to rum, what card game might he play? Bridge, Canasta, Texas Hold'em, or 52 card pickup? Not much time left. You gotta know when to hold them, and no one to admit you just made a terrible mistake. <laughs> Correct answer, show yourself. Canasta is a form of rum or rummy, so Captain Morgan would play Canasta. But never a gin rummy, it's a conflict of interest. Let's try... Perfect Cut Neil Diamond, and it's a dis or dat. I'm going to read off seven things, and for each one, tell me if it's the title of a Neil Diamond album, or a piece of evidence used in the O.J. Simpson murder trial. If it's an album by Neil Diamond, press the Y button. If it's connected to O.J. Simpson, press the A button. Alrighty then, here it comes. Crumpled Sock. Well, that glove didn't fit. And while the evidence against him is damning, I still believe O.J. Simpson was hilarious in The Naked Gun. Dance with me, Disco 3! Open wide for... Stop Staring! It's the put the choices into order, then buzz in and see if you are right! Tell you what, don't screw this up and there's a little extra cash in it for you. Put these buildings in order from the one with the fewest stairs to the one with the most. Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building, Seattle Space Needle. Empire State Building, Space Needle, Eiffel Tower, Space Needle, Eiffel Tower, Empire State Building, Eiffel Tower, Space Needle, Empire State Building, or Space Needle, Empire State Building, Eiffel Tower. <laughs> The Space Needle has 848 steps, the Eiffel Tower has 1,665, and the Empire State Building has a whopping 1,860 steps. You just picked up an extra thousand bucks for that. And I won't be visiting any of them because I'm a firm believer if you climb steps, there better be a water slide at the top. Here's one for you. Midnight in the Olive Garden of Good and Evil. Have you ever noticed that the sign for Olive Garden doesn't have any olives on it? It does have a different food, though. Considering what food does appear on the Olive Garden sign, the sign maker probably heard the boss yell, You idiot! It's Olive Garden, not Cheese Garden! Grape Garden! You know what I hate most about Olive Garden? The fake pasta names they come up with. Try our four cheese chicken pasta chediolis! Honestly, people! <laughs> now pay attention. Olive Garden signs have a bunch of great- He goes on about that so much he doesn't even tell you, oh hey, by the way, your answer's wrong. Grapes on them. They use grapes to give customers the feeling of eating al fresco in an Italian garden. An Italian garden in a mall parking lot. Finger! 
I call this one a leg up. <clears throat> I don't want to brag, but I have some pretty shapely calf muscles. Yep, I like to wear shorts around the office to show off my tanned golden calves. Put some pants on! He's just jealous. Say, who else wouldn't like my golden calves? Noah, Adam, Cain, or Moses? Oh, I really wish you were able to get that one right. A little Bible joke. Where's that confounded right answer? When Moses came down from Mount Sinai, he found his people worshipping a golden calf. The animal, not a leg, which he quickly destroyed. But even with the power of God, he wouldn't be able to destroy my golden calves. They're solid as a rock. Ow! 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 Over tanned! Let's say so long to round one, and you haven't even broken a sweat. Remember, in round two, every question is worth double. Alright, let's get back to it. Next up, that just krills me. You know what I hate? When cartoons are factually inaccurate. Take SpongeBob SquarePants, for example. Sponges do not live in pineapples, they are not friends with starfish, and what pants they do wear are most certainly not square. Oh, and another thing. The evil genius Plankton from SpongeBob SquarePants would be more accurately named what? Plinko, Plankter, Plank, or Gary? No, but you just walked it. <laughs> Here's what a right answer looks like. Plankton is a collection of floating organisms, while one of those organisms is referred to as a plankter. Oh, but let's not give our children the truth. No, let's feed them lies so they'll all grow up to trust us. Unbelievable. Question 7. May I introduce Great Michael Scotts? Which Steve Carell movie would an eschatologist probably be the most interested in? 40-year-old virgin, anchorman, seeking a friend for the end of the world, or get smart? This is gonna hurt. Here's what you meant to pick. An eschatologist is a theologist interested in the events leading up to the apocalypse or the end of the world. Which reminds me, guys, that goat carcass in the office fridge was for a blood ritual I need to do to stop the end of days from happening this weekend. And it was clearly labeled, so whoever ate it, not cool. <laughs> How about, I love trashy ladies. <laughs> breathe it in. Yes, breathe it in. Look at the your trash bag. What's it say about you? trash. Okay, so we've got a bunch of actual garbage in here. I'm going to go through it and see what we got. Let's see. There's a bunch of arrows. Yikes, a cold bone. And what I can only imagine is a threatening note card that reads, I beat Meryl. Whose terrifying trash is this? Selena Gomez's, Jennifer Lawrence's, Emma Watson's, or Kat Dennings's? <laughs> Oh, you're going to be Thor when you realize how wrong you are. <clears throat> she was in Thor. <laughs> Next time, try this. Jennifer Lawrence plays the skilled archer Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger Games movies, was nominated for an Oscar for Winter's Bone, and when she did win an Oscar for Silver Linings Playbook, famously said, I beat Meryl. So, I guess this trash isn't as scary as I first thought. It all makes sense. The bone was probably for research and, uh... No, wait. No. No, there's a lot of human skulls in here. A lot of human skulls. Coming up next... Anniversary Dinner. If the first man to suggest that Earth revolved around the sun, Galileo, had illustrated his idea using food from his own country, what would he have used? 
Spaghetti for the orbits, meatball for the sun, shoestring fries for the orbits, brie cheese for the sun, sauerkraut for the orbits, bratwurst for the sun, or chur- Now, but that's what Galileo ate right before he discovered the existence of gas giants. <laughs> Here's where the money is. Galileo was Italian. Little known fact, he opened the first olive garden in a small parking lot in Pisa. Take a good look at... Tuning you out. I am absolutely awful at remembering song lyrics. Give me a hand. Buy me some peanuts and... Um... The treat that has Sugar Bear for a mascot. The treat that has the Dutch Boy for a mascot. The treat that has Jeffrey Giraffe for a mascot. <clears throat> or the treat that has Sailor J- <laughs> Ready for this? Cracker Jack! That is always gonna go any further. Okay, we're on! I'm sorry, but these wrong answer of the game sponsors, these, these can't be real, yes? They're, they're absurd. Look, if the price tag is high enough, I'll say whatever the hell you want, but I mean, <laughs> come on. Do you think you can cover just the last half of my shift for me? Uh, yeah, like, you mean, like, four hours? Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, all you have to do is just uh, check IDs when people come in, and if anyone's rowdy, just uh, cuff them and put them in our holding cell. Oh, okay. I'm like 105 pounds, and I'm 5'2". Yeah, that's great. Here's some handcuffs. Uh, here's some mace. Well, it's a mace bottle. Uh, I've used most of it for, you know, spraying on food, so it's empty. But people do still react to it when you pull it out. Okay, thanks. No problem. The perfect cup of coffee. That's what we pour at High Horse Coffee House. But <laughs> anyway, it's not for everyone. That's, that's Frankly, a, your taste buds probably can appreciate how complex and rich our coffee video. is. And you know what? It angers us to think of you drinking it. Okay, there it is. And hey, let's take it a step further. Finale. We despise you. Let's play our coffee is fucking amazing and complex. Bye, everybody. And it's like from another f***ing dimension.